Hello everyone and welcome back to La Vida Football. My name is Luis Taviano. Today we're talking about the 4-3-3 as mentioned earlier and we're talking about the 4-3-3 doing a middle field press. So meaning that we are going to try to recover the ball in between this line here and the line here. Okay, so uh, the, the lines were portrayed prior to, to me speaking here. And uh, as you can see, our striker is essentially set up at the end of the middle third and the start of the offensive third. Essentially telling the rest of the team that we are going to do a middle field press and um, allowing the goalkeeper, as you can see the ball is here with the goalkeeper in the back, essentially allowing the first pass to whomever here in the defense to occur. That is the setup that we're doing, and we're doing the setup first with our three strikers a little bit wide and our three midfielders a little bit more compact. So essentially in a field, these three would be a little bit, a little bit closer together, uh, but also would be determined uh, where our players in the midfield are. So here the blue is set up in a 4-4-2. So then as you can see here, for our midfielders, we have a, a bit of an outnumbering situation where we have three defenders to the two attackers in the blue. We're first going to try to trap the ball on the outside and again trying to recover the ball in the middle third. So then when our ball comes here to our one of our center backs and let's say in this case the right center back, our striker essentially starts pushing up to try and prevent this pass from happening. So that is very important. So now the reason that's important is because now it steers the game to one side. Now, what's important next is that we move together. So as the ball comes to this center back, we are stepping up a little bit, sliding over. All the players are sliding over. Defenders are sliding over. And then, um, so here our, uh, our blue is left alone on the outside because everybody slid over to, uh, in this case, the left side. Um, but that's okay because we are essentially now trying to prevent these passes from happening by essentially guiding the right center back to go to the outside. So when everybody slid over, our left back essentially got in front of the uh, right middle field of the blue so that, because obviously red knows what the tactic is, in this case we are red, uh, the red already knows the tactic, and we want to first trap on the outside, and we want to trap this player here. So that's where we want the ball at the beginning. So when that pass happens, boom, this, this player essentially gets uh, that pass eliminated. And so, our, uh, our left wing, so our number 11 in this case, goes behind the player. And while that pass is happening, this player is pushing up already. So now we stop this pass from occurring. So our uh, number 8 in this case follows this pass so that it doesn't happen. Our left back essentially covers this pass completely. And if that pass is to occur, then this uh, left center back is there to uh, essentially support because now our right back is acting as a, uh, not a center back, but a, a player supporting and covering the space and essentially covering one of the strikers in this case. Okay, so here we have our first trap. And essentially it started with our striker essentially steering the game to one side. Once that pass happened, um, our left back and our number 11 here were already moving into position to make that trap. Let's say the goalkeeper, because uh, they saw that the striker has, uh, has these two players in essentially covered and essentially guiding. Maybe the, the team tries to be a little bit more proactive and instead of going to the center backs, decides to go straight into this player, so here. So now that would mean that the blue would have to come down and uh, to essentially receive the ball, right? So because if they're there and the goalie tries to get that pass, then that's essentially a 50-50 ball. So I don't think that would happen. I think if that pass were to happen, then one of the center backs will essentially kind of come in to give that space. And then this player will receive that ball. 
And now, uh, what we do next, so we see our, our focus on trapping on the outside. So now our striker, instead of covering this pass from center back to center back, now they are uh, moving in this direction to cover the pass back to that one center back. Of course, this pass is possible, so the pass from the right back to the left center back, um, but because the game is already sh has already shifted to one side, uh, our number seven that sure have already shifted to the inside and kind of tucked in a little bit, uh, essentially trying to uh, prevent these passes from happening. Um, because look, if that pass from left uh, from right back to left back occurs, we should theoretically have enough time for the entire team to slide over. So um, that that is essentially. Um, something that, that the entire team should have in, in mind. Okay, but now we have the situation here where uh, the pass is straight to the right back. Now our, so now our, our left back doesn't get in front of the attacker because now we're going to try and trap the ball here. So this player will come in a little bit and this player essentially guides the right back to dribble because now from the entire team, our left and right backs might be one of the players that have the, the least technical uh, skills for dribbling. So then we want to encourage these players to essentially carry the ball. If anybody's going to be carrying the ball, we would like for those players to be the ones to carry. Now, while they might be fast, uh, it's important to essentially uh, know that as well. Okay, And with the 4-3-3, we do have a lot of space here that we left open. Um, so, you know, that's something to keep in mind that if this player is really fast, then they can really take advantage of that position there. And, um, and if they cover, cover that space really quickly, then we can be left with, with a two versus one situation. So we got to be quick with making decisions. So when the pass comes, our striker moves there. So our number 11 uh, will essentially cover this pass, encouraging, encouraging the, the the right back to dribble forward or to move forward. Okay, so now if we have this player kind of checking in, uh, our left back is there to essentially cover. When that pass comes, then we make that press, boom. And essentially we make that trap there. And if you can see here, that is still within our range. Okay, so that was two defensive traps on the wing, uh, one stopping or trapping the right back and then the other one stopping and trapping the right midfielder okay so now we're going to reset a little bit and try to trap the ball in the center of the field okay so now we are back in the starting situation where the goalkeeper has the ball and we are allowing the first pass to occur so now we want to try to trap the ball somewhere in the center and that has to be communicated, that has to be communicated between essentially the team. So now, the first pass, let's go there to the right center back. And all of these you can essentially also do on the other side. For me, I'm just doing it just because it's a little bit convenient for me and uh, you know I wanna make it um, consistent for you guys. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay just doing the, covering the left side and, and, and essentially covering the opponent's right side okay so then the first pass occurs here and now uh, so we have this situation when that pass occurs this is this is very important so timing is very important with this situation because getting the ball to the center could be quite dangerous if we're too slow because then we are caught in a situation where we don't want to be so for example uh, let's say we open up and then now we have Again, that two versus one that we talked about earlier. So now, when that pass happens, striker covers pass to the center back, to the other center back. Winger covers the pass to the outside. Other winger tucks into the inside. You don't want to tuck in too much, not at the beginning. You want to tuck in a little bit, just so that if this pass occurs, that we are quick enough to, to essentially push out. Um, but quick enough, but close enough, tucking in close enough so that when the pass comes to the center, we are there to essentially press. 
Okay, so now we want the ball essentially to go to this player. Okay, so now when that pass occurs, this player gets blocked, this player gets blocked, and this striker essentially tries to cover the angle to that pass and the angle to that pass. Okay, so they do, as you can see here, that's the, the, the angles that are being covered so that if the center back wants the ball, they would have to back up. Um, of course, they can always go back to the goalkeeper, but essentially we're going we're gonna to assume that it goes our way so that uh, we can essentially practice that. So then we're covering that pass and that pass, and to some degree, this pass. But that pass essentially is covered by this, by this player here, our number 10. So now we have this situation where we're forcing the center back to go straight into the center. Now when that happens, this is where the timing from this player is important because now we tucked in, now that pass is covered, so now we force that either the center back to dribble forward or to essentially make that pass. And if they make that pass, then you gotta remember that the midfielder is facing their own goal in this situation. So now we push there, we tuck in, and we press, okay? So this player here, our winger, essentially presses, but essentially tries to cover the pass forward to the right back, okay? So then if the right back wants the ball, they would have to return, okay? So then we have three players attacking one player there to try to make the trap in the center, okay? So that was the, the third trap for this formation, uh, where our, again, our three wingers are spread out and our three midfielders are compact. Okay, so here we are with the next uh, type of defending with the 4-3-3, and that is with our three attackers a little bit more compact, where, with our uh, three midfielders essentially a little bit more spread out. And as you can see here, it kind of looks like, like a Christmas tree almost, the bottom a little bit more spread out and essentially goes into a, uh, a pointy tip at the end, uh, essentially giving the opponents two lanes to go to the outside. Um, and this also encourages one of the strikers to kind of come in and, and go more into the center because as you can see here, there's a, there's, there's a lot of space. There's a lot of space that is uh, unused in this, uh, in this type of situation where we're, we're standing in this uh, position. Okay, so that would encourage a striker to go in and, and kind of explore the center a little bit. Now, we're gonna start off with a defensive trap on the outside and this defensive trap will essentially look a little bit similar to the other one uh, but here again we're compact and we try to we try to stay compact and then when we press we press all together so now here we have the pass so that first pass to the outside and um, now after that first pass so similar to the other time where we have our um, our striker cutting that pass between center back to center back. Our number 11 here essentially uh, presses a little bit, just steps up so that the center back can make a, a pass or encourages the, the center back to make a pass, covering this pass, of course. So running in a, in, in, in a, in a way where this player cannot get the ball and uh, encouraging essentially that pass here. Okay, so now as this is all happening, our back line is shifting over. Our left back does not go all the way forward, but does move forward and, and pushes this player or, or encourages this player to step back a little bit. And then here we have our number eight, who is essentially next to uh, make the press. So now number six shifts over, number 10 covers a little bit more in the, in the middle. And then when this pass comes, so our number eight is already coming in a essentially like a U or L shape kind of kind of uh, kind of bowed run there. So then they make that run again, trapping the right back, and then our number eleven presses from the back, and we set up our two versus one trap here with now our number eight and our number eleven. Okay, on the other side, it would just be the number 10 
and the number seven. So then that is our first trap here. So let's reverse it, let's go back. And now we're going to try and trap our right midfielder. So here our pass comes to our center back again. Our striker covers the pass to the center back. And as you can see, that's a common theme, yeah? So our center back, uh, our center forward is the one that is essentially starting the defensive pressing, the defensive movements, and essentially guiding the, the team into what defensive action we're going to take next. Okay, so defending is all players. Yeah, defending starts with the attackers and ends with the goalkeeper. Our striker essentially steers the game to one side. Then we have this press, uh, the pass again. And now, of course, uh, we, we have this player again, the number 11, encouraging uh, our, our right back to, to, to move forward, encouraging that. And then pressing so that our, our right back here, or their right back, I mean the opponent's right back, makes that pass here. Okay, now when that happens, of course, we the players would have already shifted. And then also the strikers would have probably changed positions there. And then the number eight should have been in a position to uh, expect that this pass was going to happen to essentially make our two versus one with the right midfielder in this position. Okay, so now when the pass goes there, our, uh, our number 11 should have tucked in there so that we would have prevent this pass from occurring. Okay, so that is the second trap that we have. So the last things that I had for you was a uh, coaching recommendation. Uh, if you are a coach and you are trying to use this tactic, it's actually more of some of the weaknesses of this uh, formation uh, in the defending aspect so that um, you know you don't receive a goal. Okay, so now uh, recommendations here with the 4-3-3 defending with our attacking line wide and then our middle field line compact is that when this occurs and we tuck in, essentially we are, we are leaving these two players open and uh, essentially the center back, if they have a really, you know, a good long pass, then that is something that we need to watch out for. That is something that needs to be communicated. If that does happen, how are we going to move? How are we going to defend? Um, and essentially be ready and anticipate that this player has a good pass. Okay, especially if it's a team that you haven't played before, if it's a team that you've played before, then you would know if that pass would be, you know, a, a dangerous one, or if we can proceed with the uh, defensive pressing to trap the, the, the ball on the outside or in the center. So what we need to also watch out for is if this pass does, does happen and the wing, the winger presses, I'm sorry, pushes down a little bit, then we have to watch out for that overlap. Because then, boom, if we are following that player, then we have a one versus one here, the right back with a center back. And typically, a right back is faster than a center back. So then, um, you know, that's not a, a, a duel that we want to be confronted with. Okay, so that's something that we got to be careful with, with the 4-3-3 with our attacking line Y. Some recommendations uh, in that case is essentially stay compact. And if... If this pass does happen, that we essentially tell our winger that they need to drop all the way down, uh, essentially to uh, help and support the center backs if that ball is to occur with the right back getting the ball. Okay, so uh, just things to watch out for, of course. So what to watch out for if we are playing with our front line compact, and our middle field line a little bit more wide. So what is important to watch out for here is like I mentioned earlier, we're almost like a tree, but we have a lot of space in the middle, which will essentially uh, give the, the forwards a, a bit of a, okay, we have some space, uh, maybe we should exploit that space. 
Uh, and that is essentially the exact thing that you need to be careful with is if the opponents identify your tactic, then uh, they might try to spread you out a little bit more and then try to get our uh, one of our wingers there, in this case the number 11, to, to press, not press, but to, to shift over to the inside a little bit more so that the opponents can get a direct, a direct ball to the striker. Uh, and essentially that can be a very dangerous situation there. Okay, so then it's important to stay compact, but to communicate as well. If, if this player here, so if the number eight sees that the number 11 is tucked in, then we should tuck in a little bit more because we would prefer that the ball goes to the outside rather than to the center or to the side where our, our team is not covering. Um, so then that's something to essentially watch out for. So my recommendation there is again, um, if this player sees this player move in and leave space, then it is our duty there to cover that space so that uh, you know we, we make this duel a two versus one rather than a one versus one, uh, essentially almost giving a free pass back to, to one of their mid midfielders. Okay, anyways, that is it for my video here. I hope the 433 defending video helped you. If it did, hit that like button. Uh, I would like to kindly remind you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, and if you have any recommendations with videos, uh, you know, comment that in the comment section below. I, th I thank you again for watching. I'll see you guys next time.